briefly over Christmas, something other than Brexit led the news headlines. In what the Home Secretary termed a major incident, boatloads of migrants began arriving off the Kent coast, seeking asylum in the UK. Britain currently houses 40,000 asylum seekers, though most of them don't arrive by dinghy. The government recently signed a new 10-year contract worth billions with the private firms whose job it is to accommodate them. The companies can only house them in areas where the local authority has agreed to take part, but many councils that are involved now say the burden on them is disproportionate. In the whole South East England region, population 8.5 million, there are just 481 people supported on the asylum dispersal scheme. Contrast that with areas with populations a 20th of the size. Bolton, Wigan, Rochdale, Sandwell, Stoke, Swansea, Cardiff, Derby, Nottingham and Stockton each have far more asylum seekers than the entire South East. Many of these areas voted often strongly for leave, something picked up on by political leaders. How we deal with asylum seekers isn't just about who we allow to stay in our country. It also offers up questions about the role of the public and private sector. And at its heart is the issue of our divided nation, that sense some have that the die is loaded against them. Which brings us to Barnsley. Put simply, there are people here who believe their town is taking more than its fair share of asylum seekers. Well, it manifests itself more starkly in the Brexit vote. Uh, Barnsley was 70% to leave the EU, despite the fact that the EU has been very good to this borough when, when the coal mines collapsed and, we, collapsed and we needed investment um, in the town. So there's a statement there from the community and we know the reasons for that was all about migration. Why are there several hundred asylum seekers in a town so far away from where most pitch up? It dates back to the early days of new labour. Security cameras have been put in on the streets of Dover, such are the tensions here, a town of 25,000 currently home to 800 asylum seekers. But with police Tony Blair's government was accused of not having a grip on asylum. I think there are genuine people there amongst them, but a lot of them are just economic scroungers. One source has told Newsnight that New Labour viewed asylum as their biggest vulnerability going into the 2001 general election. Back then, most people ended up in London and Kent. Which is where the likes of Barnsley came in. Labour decided asylum seekers should be dispersed across the UK, sharing the burden away from London and the South East, predominantly to places where the housing was plentiful and cheap. Many of these areas have little history of immigration. They're often places where life is already not easy. But the government did make a promise to limit the number of asylum seekers in a particular area so it doesn't exceed one in 200 of the population. But Newsnight can reveal a very different story behind the official government statistics. On the face of it, Barnsley's 415 asylum seekers out of a population of nearly 240,000 leaves it comfortably below the one in 200 cluster limit. It's more like one in 576. The same is true in Calderdale in West Yorkshire, which has 366 asylum seekers with a population of 208,000. One in 568 are asylum seekers. The problem with those statistics is they assume the asylum seekers are spread fairly evenly across a local authority, but often they're not. They're clustered in just a few small areas where accommodation is cheap. A number of councils have said that were the one in 200 ceiling applied at local ward level, the picture would look very different. Many councils have been reluctant to highlight exactly where these areas are, but Newsnight's been shown the figures for the Yorkshire region. We can reveal that in Yorkshire, there are 10 electoral wards where asylum seekers make up far more than one in 200 people. The Park Ward in Calderdale has a density of just one in 68. In Barnsley, Kingstone Ward has a density of one in 86, and the Central Ward a density of one in 98. What we have to bear in mind is where we're we going to the lowest cost housing. Very often these are deprived communities with their own social and economic challenges to begin with. So we're not necessarily placing people into the best conditions. We need to make sure that the providers on the ground, the contractors, listen to local authorities 
and all the issues that local authorities face because it's not just about dropping people into places and seeing what happens. We need to make sure they're going to the right places into the right circumstances. When it comes to those who seek asylum, no two experiences of the process are the same, nor the journeys that have brought them here. But rarely does an individual tale involve a Prime Minister. This is another blow to Assad and his cronies in Damascus. It's good news. This is one in David the Cameron was talking about the defection in 2012 of this man. Seen here with Bashar al-Assad, Khaled al-Ayubi was a senior Syrian diplomat in London. We found him living in Barnsley. So I put them there in winter to protect them. It's very cold. Here. Very cold. These days, Khaled al Ayubi spends a lot of his time with his much-loved budgies. They are like my children now. I can't live without them. This Khaled me, claimed like, asylum in the UK a year came. after the Syrian uprising began. I was one of the first diplomats who defected. I was very scared and there was a huge danger on me. I came here to be safe. I, I, I abandoned all my fortune. I lost all my properties in Syria. But I, I want to feel safe. I'm not coming here for money. Khaled has been treated well locally. They are good neighbours, you know, here they welcome refugees, they, they're really supportive. But as a volunteer for the Refugee Council, he's met less fortunate newcomers. I met many cases. I, I saw a person, I think in 2012, he had been initially attacked and he, he lost his knee. He became disabled because of that attack. And what I learned from him that Nobody takes his case seriously. Nobody really exert effort to find who did that to him. So how are the Syrian clients getting on? Uh, they're doing good uh, so far. So the Refugee good. Council works to integrate Barnsley's asylum seekers, helping many to volunteer locally. I think we're going to move the men's group over there as well. They stress Yorkshire's proud history of taking asylum seekers, but say there are challenges. We do, through our service, come across people who've been victims of hate crime, and hostility uh, in, in, in Barnsley and uh, we encourage people to report those incidents to the police um, but you know some people say well it happens so frequently uh, I'd be always <laughs> contacting the police so you know there is this issue in, in pockets of Barnsley um, but I, I must reiterate there's also plenty of people who've been very very warm and welcoming they include Steve Lonsdale, making the most of some mild weather to give his allotment some tending. I feel as though we should make them welcome because they come from, a, they want a better life. For whatever reason it is, oppression, uh, lack of food or whatever, for a person to come to another country, that's a, it's a major thing. I feel as though if I was in that same position, I would want to uh, escape that country. Newsnight did hear concerns from others about the changes brought to Barnsley by asylum seekers and immigration more generally, but there was a reluctance to speak about it on camera. Barnsley's participation in the asylum dispersal scheme is a reminder of the traditional labour politics of the town. But at the very top here, they insist, with new contracts between government and companies due to start later this year, things can't just carry on as they are. In the end, it's going to take some extra investment to get this right. And this issue about the cheapest housing, where people in inevitably get allocated and into deprived communities, is still going to go on. So we've, we've said to government, look, if the worst comes to the worst, we have to think about, do we withdraw from the scheme? Uh, we don't want to do that, uh, but we can't carry on in the vein we've been. So some change has got to come. Barnsley's concerns are echoed across Yorkshire and beyond. Eleven local authorities in this region alone have threatened to quit the scheme. With the number of people claiming asylum in the UK at an 11-year high, the government can ill afford not to listen. That was Katie Razzle there. We asked for a minister to join us on the programme. No one chose to take part. The Home Office said in a statement, we take the well-being of asylum seekers and the local communities in which they live extremely seriously. Where a local authority agrees to take part, accommodation providers must consult with them on all properties they intend to use as asylum accommodation. We're committed to meeting with local authority chief executives to understand and address concerns about the asylum dispersal system.